Mark, 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 Mark. Ooh, I think we're live. I think we're live. I we think live, we're getting baby. all the way live. We live, baby. Ooh, I can see us now on the screen. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, for your listening and watching pleasure, welcome back to yet another episode of one of the most savage broadcasts that you could ever consume in your entire existence on planet Earth or the universe therein. Episode yeah. 176 of the JB yeah, and Benny Review Podcast. 176. Your anniversary is coming up, sir. Hey, I, I don't appreciate know if you're aware. that. So that that's dope as hell. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's wild, bro. 176. Uh, I remember. Yep. I always have to tell the story when he starts talking about episodes. And like, I remember the first time we did our first episode in Benny's penthouse uh, at. In North Hollywood on Lancaster Boulevard at the Social. Ooh, Shout out to the, the social, strip. Man. Shout out to the Social, man. Uh, so I remember the first one. Damn, that was a long time ago, bro. Like, damn, mm -hmm. right? And and look, we are where we are right now. Uh, so Benny, I see you. You know, you see I'm Yankee'd out right now. Uh, mm -hmm. Shout out to opening day, April mm -hmm. first. My Yankees will be. You know, what I'm saying on the run for another World Series. I know they got the, the Dodgers as favorites right now. Uh, yeah, about, and about the Dodgers. So. And rightfully so. I got to give them their props, but at the same time, it's it's time to start spreading the news again. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? Uh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's that time. So, yeah, baseball lovers, beware. I'm going to be – yeah, we're going to cover a whole lot more baseball this year, Benny. I'm just letting you know that. Right? As oh, yeah. my good juju oh, yeah. to get my Yankees another championship. So – Yes. Yes, absolutely. So look, we're gonna we're gonna cover that. There will be fans in the stands, hopefully, and we'll we'll get to all that. First and foremost, you know, make sure to tap in with us. Of course, you know the goddamn deal. Um, where we're at with this thing. Make sure to check out JB and Benny Blue .com. Look at that, man. Check out the merch. It's a beautiful Damn. thing. Oh, that, check man. out the merch. Oh my god, unisex oh, that, huh? made to order the dad hats. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, the dad we got, hats. We got you covered. The the, Look the at dad this. Crucial for the summer though. So mm -hmm. don't be lame, man. Handle your business. Get on there. Exactly. Exactly. Speaking of speaking of being real with the grind, JB. Uh listen, it's only right that we brought back the series. This is a this is a friend of the show who we haven't right. really been around since the glory days of NoHo. Shout out to Big Wangos. We are up Ooh. there heavy Ooh. at those times. Wang, and man. that that, that, that yeah. was that was a different era. 5300 Sir. language from Boulevard, dog. You know about it. You know the address. <laughs> by the by, the way, as as this young lady can attest, one of the one of the last th one of the last things standing after this crazy COVID time. There've been a lot of things coming and going in the Greater yeah. NoHo Arts District, but Big Big Wang still still stands. But you gotta understand that this this person that we have on today has um has 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 started from humble beginnings, like many like many dancers in in the NoHo Greater NoHo area, and, and shot to mm -hmm. new heights. JB, why don't why don't you do the honors of, of telling the folks who we have joining us today, sir? So, as everybody knows, anybody guess why that we have on that I know, they're gonna get the patent of JB introduction, right? So there has to be a story behind this. Um, so, reviewers, this young lady who is below me right now, um, beautiful young lady, by the way, uh, his name is Corbin Hunter. All right, and uh -huh. so first time I met Corbin was at Big Wayne's, right, where she was yep. a server, and. Same. That, that, honestly, just to be real, all, <laughs> all right, tell the real. Y'all know <laughs> I don't bullshit, right? I try to holler at her, like you know, what I'm saying like I'll be dumb not to, right? So uh, y'all can only see her pretty face right now, but trust me when I say everything below her neck is is on time, right? So of course I tried to holler at her, but to my surprise, one and displeasure, she was a baby, didn't he? She was 19 years old when I first met this young lady. That's so, so crazy. At that mm -hmm. point, Benny, she I went into big brother mode, of course. Because I, you know what I'm saying? She was the sweetest thing on earth. And As she you should. was unreal, right? And she was always like that every time I met her. So it was never, no matter what she was going through, she always had a great attitude. As I got to know her, she started telling me where she was from, right? Which is a great state of Minnesota. Uh, shout out to Minneapolis. Uh, yeah. And so... She told me why she was there. She told me the whole story, how she moved out there with big dreams and aspirations of being a star. No other way to put it, right? This young mm -hmm. lady wanted to be mm -hmm. a star, right? So as I got to know her more and more, 
I met the young man who she's engaged to right now, who I'm quite fond of. I like this little dude a lot, right? He's a great young man, successful, right? He treats her nice, and that's all that matters to me, right? So as time went on, right, I started to see this young lady grow, and I started to see more and more from this young lady. Now, she didn't really start doing all this other stuff until I left L.A., but oh, <laughs> so all of a sudden I'm seeing my little sister, and this is when I really flipped the fuck out, Benny. All right, <laughs> the homecoming tour with our queen, all right, the one and only Miss Beyonce knows, oh, right? Man. I'm Talk sorry, Beyonce it. knows Carter, Carter. right? Right, yeah, get, her, get her right, Mrs. Carter. <laughs> all right, as we all know, as Mrs. Carter now, you know what I'm saying? She was on stage, Benny, and I didn't know she was there. Right, and I happened to see her Instagram, and I'm like, I know this child ain't where I think she at. Benny, I, my eyes welled up. I got, I was so full of pride when I oh. saw my little sister on stage at the home to home coming to her at Coachella, right, dancing with the queen herself, mm -hmm. which kind of say knows Carter. And from there, she's done, you know, little things like performed at the Grammys with Lizzo, right, and currently she yep. danced with B. Stallion herself, Miss Megan Stallion. Shout out to Houston, Texas, baby. Hey. You know mm -hmm. And then, uh, I review is I, I can't hold this no longer. This is my baby girl. All right, Miss Corbin Hunter. Thank you. Welcome to the hey. show. That's right. Oh, that's thank right. You guys for having me. I'm super happy to be on here talking with y'all, talking to everybody who's here on this uh, live stream. So, yeah, what y'all want to know? <laughs> listen, listen folks if, if you got if you if you're tapping in with us we understand that some of you folks catch us as a podcast if you're tapping in with us here and you want your questions you know drop them drop them in the comments whether you're on facebook on twitter on yeah. youtube we'll get into all that and more <clears throat> um but first and foremost Corey, I mean, so of course jb had to give you the the illustrious introduction um I know. Well, what i, I want to take you back not all the way to the beginning I know, like, see, you got, you got, I can see you got a tear welling up. I know what that was. Whoa. That wasn't an itch. That was a, that was a, that was a, th that was a thug tear coming down. The, right. the, the, title, right now. the title is real. You know, like, I moved to LA when I was 18 years old, right from high school. Told my parents, wow. mom and dad, I have a dream. I'm out of here. And my mom works for a college. So just, just believe how like devastated Ooh. she was. I told her, mom, I don't want to go to college, right? Ooh, yeah. Um, but my parents have always believed in me. They've always believed in, you know, their children following their dreams. They said, okay, Cormus, what you gonna do? You know, go fly. And I was like, okay, took my little two, two suitcases and I was out of there. But of course, you know, you guys both lived in LA. Do you still live in LA? Um, no, yeah, I'm, I, I'm still, still I'm still here. I'm still in North Hollywood and Jamie's, Jamie's in Arizona. Yeah. I live in the yeah, I okay. live in the but, so y'all know it's expensive and just imagine someone at 18 years old trying to figure this out on their own had no idea never had to pay for anything by themselves i was well over my head anyways long story short you know um had to work of course right to take care of my bills and so forth so i met it's damn you made me a 19 that's so crazy my first yeah. job in la was actually hooters right you know, yeah. I'm, I'm small. I, like you said, you know, I, I'm physiqued well around, the, you know, around the bottom half, you know, so I did fairly well, got my money, boom, in and out. Um, and then I was like, okay, well, I'm transitioning. I want to go into North Hollywood and, uh, you know, get into like the higher up, I guess it's like a step up, whatever the case. So I went to Big Wang's and I was there for, I think maybe three years. So I was there from 19 till about 21, 22, <clears throat> and um, met so many amazing people, and he was one of them. Um, and in in this area that I'm in, you know, I'm in the land of like dancers, artists, just everybody. I, I've met so many amazing people, but I've been able to share my story of why I'm here, you know. And a lot of people come to LA with dreams and goals, but unfortunately, they never make it. And I refuse to be one of those individuals. Um, so it was hard. It was hard, you know, working at this restaurant, you know, not being able to do what I wanted to do, missing classes and so forth. But it was a way for me to network and meet amazing people. Some random guy I met, you know, at um, one of my jobs gave me an audition here. You know, you don't have an agent. Go to this audition, do this, do that. So it was, you know, a really great 
great way for me to network and meet, you know, cool people. And I've met, I have amazing relationships because of, because I worked at Big Wings and I, you know, don't regret it for a second, but, um, I kept going, I kept pushing and eight years later, my mm. eighth year of being in LA, I was able to 20, I moved in 2013, maybe about five, five years, 2018, I booked Coachella. So yeah, cause that's, that's righteously, wow. I left mm. in 2018 and yeah. you know what I'm saying? So yes, yeah, so I met you when I first moved back to North Hollywood. So, uh, so what people don't understand about North Hollywood Corbin is that North Hollywood is like the mecca of dance, right? Literally. Yeah. Real rap, like it, no, no, no right. disrespect to no other city, nothing like that. But like North Hollywood is the mecca of dance, right? Every other yeah. corner is a dance studio. Uh, every, like you said, every young person wants to be a dancer. Like shout out to my uh, my goddaughter Taylor Knight. You know what I'm saying? Who yeah. did the same thing, right? You know what I'm saying? Went out there and just got crazy with it and got on. But explain to the people that don't understand. Maybe some young lady who's listening right now, a young man who's listening right now about the grind as far as like just dealing with the competition of uh auditions and like this is millennium was popping crazy like my daughter was a dancer and an actress yep. you know debbie saying? reynolds all that yeah yep. so yeah so all that you know what i'm saying like so explain to them this the struggles and the, the intensity and the competition that you had to face to get where you're at absolutely um so it's so crazy because every i'm not you know not trying to shoot my horn but i was very good at what i did in minnesota right usually the best of the best from wherever you're coming from out of the 50 yeah. states all the best come to la so mm -hmm. you know someone coming from that stature to now coming to la like okay i got this blah, blah, blah. i had a huge wake-up call like, uh -uh, no, this is gonna, <laughs> this not gonna be as easy as you thought um and i didn't understand how political this industry was mm -hmm. um Talk you know uh, it's a real thing people don't uh, can I cuss on here? I don't know if I can. Mm -hmm. You can do it. You can do what you feel. Please All express right, yourself. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> yeah, you motherfucking <laughs> right. You know, you know. <laughs> um, but no, people don't give a shit, honestly, like about your feelings. One, two, you may be extremely talented, but if they don't know you, <laughs> they don't right. like your look. Mm -hmm. it, it's a wrap. And I'm from Minnesota, so I'm 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 the nice girl. I'm very sensitive, and you know, so it took me a very very hard time to get in tune with how things work in this industry. Um, so as far as the grind goes, like I would I was a part of Debbie Reynolds Scholarship Program. It was a six month mm -hmm. program. I was dancing probably thirty hours a week, minimal. Mm -hmm. That's damn near a full time job. Yeah, yeah. On top of going to Big Wings afterwards. And working six to eight hours, on your so feet. tired mm -hmm. on your feet, <laughs> you know? no less. On your yeah. feet, yeah. On my feet all the time, barely eating. I was broke. Wow. You know, tips were whatever. You no, know, I I got by. I do what I had to do. <clears throat> um, but it was it's hard. You're beginning. Your well, your first transition trying to make it into this industry. It's not supposed to be easy, right? You all got to put in your dues. You all got to put in your dues. It's going to be hard. It's, you're trying to network. You're trying to meet new people. Um, you're trying to figure out, okay, well, if I want to get this job, who do I got to talk to? Who do I got to connect to? Like, this is a game. You got to learn how to play the game. That just kind of goes for everything. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, and if you come and you don't know nobody, to, I'm sorry to say, but you will never get that job. So, like, the, the switch for me came into, okay, Corbin, so if you want to dance for this woman, who do you need to be around? Whose class do you need to be in? You know, who who's the choreographer's assistant? Who's her sister's assistant's friend, boyfriend? Right. Like you trying to like <laughs> piece the puzzles together. Right. Um, it's it's networking. Um right. and when you just love something, you have a passion for something, you just want to come out and do your thing based off talent. And unfortunately, I had I came to the realization that, that well, came to the realization that it's so much more than that um right. which is unfortunate but it's the game so um so we talk about north hollywood right and we can't, we can't talk about north hollywood without mentioning coach g at g train shout out to coach gary matthews shout out uh, to gary at, at g train fitness uh now you're talking about networking right mm -hmm. coach g had some of everybody come through 
G Train, like, and the classes that he had. So from influencers, Insta, big Instagram names, um, professional athletes, actors, dancers, and dancers, well. and mo dancers, right? Because everybody, some kind of way, found their way to G Train <clears throat> Fitness, man. You know what I'm saying? So. Uh, you talk about network, and I know that had a big, you know, saying a, a big effect on your your whole career and so on and so forth. Because you met a lot of people. It's a lot of successful people that come from that G Train family, like you know, what I'm saying Absolutely. just yeah. being around and about G Train, and then just like you talking about like just different places, you know, what I'm saying like the and and just different apartment complexes and going to this party and going here and going there, right? So people don't understand like getting into North Hollywood, man. Like that's it's kind of like a, a social club itself, right? You know what I'm saying? So for yeah, people who don't understand what she's saying, in the world, that's that's just North Hollywood, right? And then getting into the world that right. you were in, which is like a whole nother avenue, you know what I mean? So right. how did the Beyonce thing come about? Now, that's this is where everything just took off for you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. How did, how did that happen? Let me, let me tell you guys the real story. So 2016, um, I had just gotten my agent, and it's so crazy. And this was like my first actual audition. Mm. But because I had been working at Big Wangs and, you know, trying to pay bills and take care of shit, um, I had not been in the gym. I had not been in class. I had not been a priority because at this time I'm like, well, shit, I got to, I, it's expensive out here. I got to figure things out. You gotta so live. Yeah. I got this call for Beyonce 2016 for formation. And with, no preparation on my end. I made it to the very end of this callback. And it was probably like a three week audition. Look, he got the whole, no, you don't. <laughs> he, um, can we, can we spot like, Corbin? Right. Just so, look, just look for the, the one, big, one thing that uh, people don't know about uh, Ms. Corbin. And you're talking about dancing yeah. with the queen. We talk about the queen. Now Corbin is the queen's lookalike. Right, so Corbin is the one that everybody mistakes for the queen at all times. And if you know what I'm saying, if I'm not mistaken, I don't know exactly how that goes. I just know <laughs> from keeping up with my girl that you are the one who is the queen's lookalike, right? So <laughs> that's nuts, girl. So keep telling that story, like keep telling me that story. Continue. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll get to there, we'll get there. Okay. Um, so 2016, I auditioned for formation, and like I was saying, I had like no preparation for that. So I had gone to the very end of this audition. It was about like a three week period. Like I'm not eating, I'm stressed, <laughs> you know, like just anxiety at all time high. I'm right. like, oh my God, my dreams are about to come true. Like da 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 I got to the very end and it came down to me and my best friend at the time. And oh. they chose her oh. and not me. I, of course, was ecstatic for her, um, but crushed. But this girl, she had just taken the scholarship program for six months before me. Right. So guess who was prepared and who wasn't prepared? Exactly. You know, she was, and I wasn't. So yeah, I had a pity party. I took about two weeks off and I cried literally every single day. Oh. But then I had to think, I said, okay, Corbin, so you have two options. One, you can quit and go home like everybody else does. Or two, get it together, put your big girl panties on and get to fucking work. Excuse my language. And that's no, what I don't, don't excuse the language. So I got in the gym. <laughs> I got in the gym. Shout out to Gary G Train. I, I I signed up for G Train. I was in there religiously. I went and did the six month scholarship program where I was literally dancing for hours every single day. And I said, okay, so next time when this audition comes back up, because Beyonce goes on tour every two years. Mm -hmm. Next time this woman calls, I'll be ready. And that's exactly what I did. I made sure that I was ready. And when I got that email, I was like, okay, bet it's game time. Nice. And I booked. So, you know, it's kind of just like for a lot of people, you know, when they're down and when they, when they lose something, they don't get something. That's honestly, when you fail, that's the, that's honestly where you see someone's resilience of like how they get back up because right. most people it's hard you know, like this shit is hard being told no, 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 over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And it even hurts when it's something that you want so much. I've been dreaming of dancing for Beyonce since I was 12 years old, you know? So like to see how close I was, like that story of that man who's about to like 
hit one more brick and he was on the other side of gold. Like I was literally right there, you know? And instead of just turning around and saying, all right, well, this is just not for me, I guess. I was like, all right, girl, you got, you don't have a choice. <laughs> you either right. gonna get your job or you're going to go home and just be another statistic of somebody who went to LA and just came home. So mm -hmm. that's the story. Um, and yeah, so booked Coachella and then from Coachella out of shit, 150 people, I was chosen out of 13, you know, 13 of us went on tour. So okay. that's kind of the story of that. And then Beyonce led to all the other adventures I've been able to do. So that's yeah, that's our short story. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't want the short story. We want the long story. All right. So yeah. uh, Lizzo and the Grammys, right? Uh, yeah. these are, Corbin, these are these are big things, sweetheart. Like, right? Who, my people just don't get to dance at the Grammys. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, one, you know what I'm saying? The dance at the Grammys, like you know what I'm saying? Because this is the Grammys. Like, so we understand that this is a white man's business. You know what I'm saying? But this is the Grammys. You know what I'm saying? So Lizzo was having her thing going on. You know what I'm saying? And so how did you get that audition? Right? How did that story go? And then transition on into how you got with Megan. Right. I got you. I got you. So um, the Lizzo job, actually, <clears throat> it's crazy. I didn't even have to audition. This just goes to show you that closed mouths don't get fit. Right. So someone said, hey, still looking for dancers um, for Lizzo, but you have to be technically trained. Now, I'm a technically trained dancer. I, I grew up doing all styles, ballet, tap, jazz, hip hop, na you name it. I've done it. But since moving to LA, have I done it? No. <laughs> like, I'm not out here trying to be no ballerina, no to do. No, that's right. not me. But it was for Lizzo, and it was mostly black women. And they were showing, you know, that black women are ballerinas too. And, you know, it was like a, a ballerina section, then also the hip hop section. But they were only looking for girls who could do ballet. So, what I said, I said, okay, you still need girls? I literally was in G Train. <laughs> had someone run out and shoot a 20 second video of me doing some ballet scene across the street. I sent it to them and they booked me. But had I never asked the question or never like, you know, just texted this individual, oh, I'm scared. Oh, they didn't ask me. Oh, nah. Like in this industry, if you want them, you got to go and get it. Right. So that's honestly how I got that job. And it was absolutely amazing. Um, I was so sore from that because the girl ain't, ain't doing no type of bop ma, no jet tays in a very long time. My feet were cramping Ooh. Um, <laughs> because I was supposed to be doing point. And I'm not, I'm not quite sure if you guys even know what that is. Uh, so first of all, uh, Corbin, I am a dance dad. So yeah, I know you everything is you're saying. My daughter yeah. dance. Uh, oh yeah, I've, trust me, I've done four daddy daughters. Yeah, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm deep in the game. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I know exactly what you're saying right now. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, just to let you know. You know what I'm saying? I was stressed <laughs> out, like, have not. And this points where you're dancing on your toes, like, I'm dancing on the top of my toes. Hmm. I weigh about like 175. That's, a, I was stressed out. Okay. So, long story short, um, yeah, but ended up not having to do that. So, I was able to. Uh, just your regular ballet, and it was good. So, boom. That was amazing. So much fun. Um, was actually on my list, the Grammys, and so cool. I got to do it with Lizzo. She's amazing. I love her. Um, but Megan, I actually had been working with Megan prior to Grammys, so I got a text. Everything in this industry is about re ref Yes, come on, body, yaddy, yaddy. Yes. <laughs> love my girl. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. Um, I love her. So a lot of um, jobs are off of referral, right? So um, I got a text from this woman. She was like, hey, you don't know me. My name is Megan Nugent, whatever. Um, she was a choreographer at the time. I'm looking for girls with body. I am the girl right there in the back, if you can see me, in the left. Mm -hmm. That's me. Um, and... So I'm looking for a black women who have body um, and who are tall. And I was like, okay, well, yeah, like that's me. Check so check, right? uh, <laughs> I booked with her, let's see. Uh, my first job with Megan was back in 2019. We did, um, went to Miami for Rolling Loud. Mm -hmm. 
and it was so much fun. I loved her, her energy. And it was uh, four of us. Um, and it's crazy because literally like a month before, a gentleman had me do a like um, concept video to Megan's song. I think it was Sex Talk. And <clears throat> he was supposed to be her character at the time. So people just, any time an artist is looking for a tall girl with body or breast, whatever the case, they usually always just call me because nobody else out here has my body. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> they really don't. Uh, you're really right. Cool. No, no, I, I, you're right. At least as a dancer, do they have my body? Yes. Is it real? I don't know. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but real body, I do know that. Um, <laughs> we'll go into that a whole. All right, all right. But, um, yeah, yeah, check. Go ahead, girl. So, <laughs> so you know, they use me a lot, and that's why, like, I got to be Beyonce standing because I, I'm a black woman who does have a natural body, and that's what she represents, and that's also what Megan represents, right? having this amazing, beautiful body. So I did stuff for her first. And so when I met her, she was like, oh my God, I've seen you before. And I was like, girl, I know you haven't. Like, what are you talking about? Um, but they had sent her my video for concepts. Like um, a lot of her concept videos were of me just showing her like what to do. So I'm like, I've been doing, I guess, this body doubling thing for a while. Right. But um, after Rolling Loud, they were like, okay, well, we're actually thinking about going on tour. Do you guys want to go? And I was like, well, yeah. Like the fact that I get to dance for someone who exudes her sexuality as a woman and just is in love with her natural body. I, I've struggled with body images my entire life. Um, so like being able to work for someone who's also my age, we're the same age, um, who helped me like be okay with the fact that I, I ha I'm curvy, you know, and I don't have to, you know, look like these other individuals, these other girls who I grew up, you know, dancing around my entire life. Um, you know, and, and as much as I love Beyonce, you know, those women were much smaller than me. You know, I, I was bigger, I was curvier. And so even then as, you know, being in that spotlight of, of being able to dance next to this, you know, amazing woman and uh, the other 12 girls, you know, I'm still like, oh my God, like I'm the biggest one on the stage, right? When I was small. So I look back now, I'm like, girl, you're crazy. But still like the fact that I felt like that, it's like crazy. So when I started into with Megan, I just, it, a whole, and I'm sure you've noticed a whole new side of Corbin, just right. like unlocked. Like right. I don't even yeah. sleep about what anybody got to say. Like this is my <laughs> body. I love yeah. my body. I yeah. was out here. Literally, good. like I'm a hot girl. Great. Thank um, God. Oh my God, <laughs> Corbin, listen. Yeah. Right. Baby so, uh, has disappeared. Corbin, li listen, baby girl. I am yeah. the biggest advocate of natural women, like you yeah. can never believe, right? Because I get it. I understand. You know, <laughs> we, me and Benny have had this talk a million times, right? Breast fall. All right, I get it. <laughs> right? I understand. Right. So breast augmentation, I I understand. Right, some women are born with no titties. I so breast augmentation I get, but everything else I'm kind of like, you know what? I, first of all, I've been in fitness since I retired from the NFL, right? Yeah. So I've seen what a hard working person can do to their body, right? Like, so there's no excuse. I know women with seven children that have little waist, round hips, butts, breasts. Yeah. You can't tell me no different, right? So for I appreciate Megan, one, you know what I'm saying? One, she's from the South, so, and that girl could go. I remember the first time I saw her on YouTube, you know what I'm saying, freestyling on the roof with the with, with the homies, you know yeah. what I'm saying, from the nickel. I, I remember that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yep. she could really, really yes. open her mouth and like spit, like outside of just her, you know what I'm saying, catering to the women, like that girl could go. Yes, right. Right. H-Town don't play no game when it comes to, you know, being able to rap, you know what I'm saying? You gotta have your shit tight. So, she can embrace her. that. And that natural body thing, man, you know what I'm saying? So I having daughters, you know what I'm saying, the whole sexuality thing, guys be like, oh, all she talk about is sex. So I'm like, look, man, it's a difference, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's a difference. She's just exuding the fact that she's an alpha female. You know what I'm saying? She knows what she wants. She's a boss. She do what she do. And that's that, man. So you tell Megan I said hi. All right. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I said hi. And I love you. Know, like, so you know, so I, I appreciate her for who she is. All right. And uh, so the last thing I want to ask you, you know what I'm saying, is just about being a career woman, right? Yeah. Uh, I have three daughters, right? And I believe in women being strong, being independent, being powerful, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But being smart and being submissive, you know what I'm saying? Like, so it's like you're a, 
a fiance, right? About to be a wife, yeah. right? But you can take care of yourself, right? You don't need that young man for nothing, right? And I appreciate that. One of the reasons why I love you to death. But you understand that this is the man you want to be with and you depend on him, right? Yeah. So I need you just real quick to explain that dynamic, you know what I'm saying? Because you are doing the finance thing now along with everything you got going on yeah. in Hollywood and dancing and with Megan and everything mm -hmm. on that side, you have found another niche that's taking care of your finances and you're learning more about finances to push up yourself for the future, right? So explain to these young women how important it is, you know what I'm saying, to one, be able to do for self, and then the two say have enough sense to be like, you know what, I do need this man, but I don't need this man, right? Absolutely. All right. So, you know, and it's crazy because I, I keep, people keep asking me this question a lot recently. Like, are you, are you sure you're ready to be a wife? And it's like, you know, I understand because, you know, in past times, we know like the wife's stature is supposed to be like, okay, she stays home, you know, she does the dishes, she cooks dinner, she does the laundry, like, okay, like I get it. Like, yes, I'm more than happy to do these things. Will it be demanded of me? No, I'll do it because I want to, because I love this man. Second, you know, I watched my mom, my mom and my father were together um, for about 35, 36 years. And my mom was a stay at home mom for a very long time. Um, so, you know, she gave up a lot of her life to take care of her children. I have four siblings. Mm -hmm. My father brought in most of the money. And unfortunately, my parents had divorced recently in the past five years. So I watched my mom who literally just, you know, took a random job just to like keep herself busy. But of course, with marriage, you know, she support, she was, my dad supported majority of our lifestyle. So when my mom and my dad got divorced, my mom literally had nothing, had no retirement, had nothing. You know what I'm saying? And it literally broke my heart because here I am sitting, I thought, you know, and as a, as a, as a child and as a, you know, a daughter, you sit and you look at what your parents have and you hope to have the exact same thing. And so when I saw that happen, I was like, okay, never in your life will you be dependent on a man? Because yes, in a marriage, we are a team, you know, like, and I, I value that and I want to have that in my life and in my marriage. But, you know, look, like all I have is, 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 is seeing what happened with my mother. And it's, it's, it's a very scary thought for me to be reliant on not just a man, but on another person in general. Um, and so for my women, I just wanted to make sure, you know, and I, I, I talk a lot about this to my, to my young girls and just, I don't care how old you are, women, period, you know, is to make sure that no matter what, you still have yourself, you have you, you have, you know, your name, your brand outside of your, your husband and your marriage. And just, I'm, I've always, my mother is strong. Like I, I get so much from my mom and she preaches to me now, of course, you know, like make sure that you take care of you, make sure that you still have your voice outside of his, make sure that you still, you know, stand by, your values and and um, just making it a priority to still it, it is to me. I I make it a priority to still have Corbin Hunter before I become Corbin Johnson. Is that if that makes sense? You know, like yeah, yeah uh, um, because I would I'm planning to be with this man for the rest of my life. I I can't plan what's going to happen in 30, 40, 50 years. God forbid. <laughs> something will happen, I yeah. want to make sure that Corbin and my family, my children, my daughters are prepared and are going to be okay. You know? Um, so just, you know, don't ever, don't let a man or just anybody, you know, take away your light, what you want to do financially. Um, I see a lot of times like men being upset with their women because they make more like, all this drama and BS, but I just, it's its important to me to have, to make sure that Corbin is planted financially. And so that when, you know, cause my husband, my husband, he's not my husband. It does fairly well for yes, himself. Yes, I, yes, like he makes yes, his own yes. money, That's great. <laughs> but I don't ever want to have, I have to ask, Hey honey, can I have the card? Can I go and buy, can I buy this? No, nah, I'm going to buy it. Cause I got my own damn money. You know what I'm saying? Right, like, right. Is how I am and how I want to be and how I want to raise my daughter. 
because you shouldn't have to ask permission. But yes, you know, when it's something that involves the two of you um, respectfully, absolutely, you know, yeah. but I, no one's ever going to tell me what I can and cannot do because I worked for it. It's my money. Yes, right. it's our money, but making sure that, you know, she got her own. Beyonce gave you the, you gave you the blueprint. Shit. Right. You know, she got 10 records about that. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh -uh. you can be a wife, you can be a business owner, you can be whatever you want to be. Like, I, I hate labels. I don't like people say, oh, you just have to be this. Like, no, you don't. No. I can be a dancer. I could be in network marketing. I could, you know, do for, I can do whatever I want to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't ever let people put labels on you, especially society or these right. people in your world, because there is no limitation to what you can and cannot do. Honestly, it, it's, it's you. Understood. Outstanding young lady. You oh, go, yes. girl. You go, girl. Look, I hey to all you young ladies out there, I hope y'all listening. You know what I'm saying? Again, yeah. I have three daughters. And I tell my daughters all the time, like, you shouldn't get serious about a man until you can take care of everything that you got going on. Right? Absolutely. You can take care of your own bills, save for your own car note, your own insurance, your own everything, own rent, whatever, mortgage. Then you can get serious about being with a person who can take care of their own self. Right, and then you can build something that's super strong. So that's Absolutely. what Nick Corbin is trying to give you, young ladies, the game on. Right, an empire over here. Huh? That's what I'm talking about. That's how you really build an empire. You did. So Benny, I know you ain't said much. You know, what I'm saying he let Benny just <laughs> <call>. let me <laughs> let me Benny. run the show when there's people that I know. You know, what I'm saying so. Benny you got some questions from Miss Corbin. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, man, you, you did you did a phenomenal job. You 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 took it exactly where we needed to go. We 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 carved we carved the path. Yeah, right. actually, revolt I swear TV, to God, you're, you're gonna get a revolt every every week until we get a revolt. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I'm gonna revolt every time. With Corbin, I'll right. talk to you. I'll right. tell you about that. We got, we got, we got, we got the plug. We got the plug. So, Corbin, we do, yeah. we do have one question here on the Savage Hotlines from our guy, Money Making Mitchell Hughes, and you kind of answered it when you're kind of at that crossroads. But he asked, was, "Was there a point you thought to yourself, either this isn't worth it, or I can't do this?" Was there a point where you kind of felt that way? Absolutely. Um. Probably like year two, year three. Um, I called my mom multiple times a day crying. Like, I don't think I can do this. I don't think this is like literally what you just asked. I've, I've asked myself this multiple times, but I had to think to myself. I said, Corbin, there are there may be people who don't believe in you, but there are people who do. And I knew that I had to make it for the girls back home and for people out there to be that example, to be that inspiration, to show them that it was possible. A girl from Minnesota of all places could make it to the big stages. Um, and that was kind of just my, my thought. And I, I wasn't gonna quit, I'm not a quitter. Hunters don't quit. And I wasn't gonna come home and, oh, so you, you, you tried. You know, my, and I love my dad too, but he didn't even think I was gonna make it four months. I'm very stubborn, I'm a Taurus. So you tell me I ain't gonna do something, I'm gonna do everything in my power to prove you wrong. So that's right. Every right. Taurus, you know what I'm saying? That's how we operate. So you know what I'm I, saying? I, I, I can attest, you know what I'm saying? Because Benny, there has been times like I used to be in big ways a lot more than you because it was right on the street for me, and like you know what I'm saying? That was kind of my watering hole. So I know there have been times where I walk in big wang and I see this girl's face, right? And and I just knew when something wasn't right, right? You know what I'm saying? She 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 can't hide it. You know what I'm saying? That's oh. she can't hide it. So we've had conversations, plenty of conversations, Benny. And I ain't, you know, I'm not that dude like, oh, it was all me. But every time she needed me, right, I'm 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 a coach. You know what I'm saying? So you're not gonna give much sympathy. She can tell you the truth, like, you know what I'm saying? I'll be like, look, man, what what you, what, what we doing here? You know what I'm saying? Like you told me what the hell you want to do. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. what we doing? I'd be in there sad. I used to be in right. So. That restaurant just upset. <laughs> I had to come to work, and right. then I felt bad because then we're like, "What is wrong with you, Corbin?" Like you'd be like, "Corbin, come here." Right. I, mean, I don't have time. Like I'm, I, I, I walked in with an attitude because I, I, I was so upset that I had to sit here and work this shift when I could be, you know, on this job or whatever. But I had to. Just, I'm like, Dang, you are here. It's temporary. This is temporary. Your time is coming. Your time is coming, and that's literally what I had to keep telling myself: your time is coming. Your time is coming. Your time is coming. And of course, at the time. You can't see, you know, past right. what I see, you know, right. four walls of this restaurant. You know, I, you, I really had to have vision over sight. Um, mm -hmm. And, whoo, baby, we done made it. 
<laughs> the best is yet to come, though. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I, I do truly believe you know what I'm saying with this young lady because there is no stopping her. Uh, this thing here is real, realer than real. All right. Um, I don't believe you got any more questions for this young lady because if not, we're gonna let her go. I have been elated. This has been one of the best interviews we've ever had. Right. Mm-hmm. We we we've had we've had we've had, we've had some folks on the show. Yeah, Let's be and clear, we've had, and we've had, we've had, we came with it, yeah. Here now. So, uh, yeah. just to be really real, like this has been one of the realest, you know, what I'm saying, like most organic, open, transparent interviews we've ever had on this show, and we appreciate yeah. you, young lady. All right, absolutely. And I absolutely. wish you more success, more life, more success, all that good stuff. And if I ain't at that wedding, I'm burning some shit to fuck down. Uh, right? Oh my god! Completely honest with you. Oh man, right? I'm coming, and I'm gonna be cute and all this shit. <laughs> Might shorter. come along. Well, you ain't yet. I'm just, <laughs> right. I'm just joking. Right, exactly. So look. We Corbin, we, we appreciate you. Make sure to tap in with Corbin on Instagram. You know, you, you can keep up what she's got coming up next. I know COVID probably w- was kind of wild. Of course, the, the mega video dropped in, in uh in November of last year. So we know big things mm-hmm. are coming. We're gonna we're gonna, you know, stay tapped in with what you're doing. And listen, we just we just we just appreciate you rocking with us and hopefully people take some some inspiration and some and some things away from okay. this conversation. That's so we, we appreciate you. Dude, no, thank you guys you know? both. For having me, I know Benny. You've been trying to get me on here for a minute, and uh, you've been trying to get me on here for a minute. So, thank you, JB. I yeah. love you. Love you back, uh, right. No, honestly, thank you guys for getting me on. Sometimes people aren't ready, aren't willing to, you know, talk about the real how they got here, and that's selfish to me because yeah. I wish I had somebody when I was trying to make it to at least give me something, you know. So. That's Anytime love. you guys need me and I'm available, I'm here. Thank you for having me on here. Yeah, just, a, just a heads up, like since I can't go to Miami for my birthday because my homeboy told me I can't come down there because the city basically shut down. So yeah. I probably, most likely, will be in LA for my birthday. And if I am, the city won't be the same after I leave, right? So okay. I'm giving you a heads up. All right. <laughs> Let me know. You my number one. I'll talk, girl. <laughs> Love Bye, you, guys. We, we, we appreciate you. Thank Make sure you. it's happening with Corbin. And we got we got a lot, we got a lot more still to come. We got a lot more still to come on this fine live stream here. We appreciate Corbin so much. I know she will she will be back here when we got more stuff popping. But folks, guess what? If you want to get down with a get down, oh, you want to sponsor this fine podcast you know what i'm saying you gotta get you gotta tap in with us you know what i'm saying get at us jb and benny blue review at gmail.com you know what i mean you can get down with us here on a live stream we can do fresh chirons on the bottom banner right there you can you know what i mean you can promote on our podcast pre-roll mid-roll we got you the no, email what, newsletter what, 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 it don't what, matter what, baby what, you know what, what, what i'm saying what, what, we got what, what, it what, billboards what, all that type of shit you know what i'm saying smoking so we got you. We got you. Make sure to tap in with us here for the goddamn sponsorship. All right, Mitch, we appreciate it. Mitch, I know you had a couple questions, but we know we had to get that one off. So appreciate it. Mitch, we got your we got your voicemail at the end of the show for the Savage Hotline. So look, JB, that was a great interview. Um, that was but, nice, man. I ain't gonna lie, that was all right right there. You, know what I'm you do like, well, man. I'm proud of you. I'm really proud of you. You're, you're, you're learning. You're learning. You're learning from the best. You know what I'm saying? Revo- you're right. Learning you know from what the saying? best. The, the future host of the Price is Right, right here. You know what I'm saying? So I'm learning from the best. The only, the one, benefit Ryan Smith, the third Esquire law. Pow, pow. So look, we got to get, we, we're, we're about 45 minutes deep, so let's, let's keep this train moving. We are into some review reaction news, baby. And first and foremost, oh, JB was curious about this. We've talked about it a little bit over past episodes, but uh, we got to get back into Apparently, Dr. Bridges, we are looking at a 17-game schedule, but the Ooh. Bears... The fucking bears uh yeah, bear. voted against it for what it first of all what did you like what did you we it, it's been in the works for a minute we know we know the owner's been talking about it i guess right. the last preseason week is going to be like a bye week but what it, what is your kind of what is your kind of feeling on this new 17 game season there's one more check i don't i mean there's nothing else to say it's one more check so uh they took away one preseason game which is that's righteous Right there, after the third preseason game, you pretty much know who's going to be in your team anyway. So, 17 games 
means 18 game season, people, for you dumbasses that don't understand NFL football, that means we have to have one bye week. Every team has a bye week, right? So every team plays 17 games. We've already added another, what, two teams to the playoffs, right? Mm-hmm. To the playoff structure. Exactly. Again, this is all about making the product better, right? What do the people want? The people want more games. They gave them one more game. They gave them two more teams in the playoffs per conference, if you will, NFC, AFC. This is what it's all about. And they took that third preseason game away, which, again, it's kind of irrelevant. Right? Nobody watches the fourth preseason game. There's nothing needs to see. Nobody that plays or is a starter or has been on the team in previous years plays in their fourth game. So it's like, no, this is this is decent. There's nothing else to talk about. Anybody who said it's dumb or they don't agree with it, you dumb as hell. I don't know what to tell you. Like real shit. Like it, there's this is not major. This is this is nice. This is a good thing. Again, it's one more game check. So the guys are getting paid more money. So it is what it is. All right, keeping it moving here. Uh, apparently, the Supreme Court is finally doing their goddamn job and uh, questioning the model of the NCAA. You saw my guy Isaiah Livers wearing his uh, not NCAA property shirt because he learned from the best, the OG of player empowerment, Mr. Mm. Jawan Howard, even though even though my Wolverines got bounced. It's whatever. It's whatever. Number one recruiting class coming in. I'm not worried about hey, it. Hey, listen. Uh, Great step. You know. Big time step for, for Michigan Wolverines right there. You know what I'm saying? They're going mm-hmm. to what? The Elite Eight, right? Yeah, lead eight, you know, and I mean, listen, everyone's saying, oh, Michigan, oh, they get so close all these years and they they trick it off. It's like, yeah, I get it. But listen, man, we're 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 a consistent program, even going back to John Beeline, because mm-hmm. he he took mm-hmm. it to a certain level. They got they got to the title game a couple times, and you know, Jawan is gonna take piece, higher. Though, That's just one piece, right? Yep. When you get to that point and they lost the way they lost, I think they lost with like what one point or lost at the end of the oh, game. Oh man, right? they, they like they had three cracks at it. I didn't right. even watch the game, but I watched the highlights. So it's driving me crazy. About, yeah, yep. we're talking about one one player away, and you just said yep. top recruiting class in NCAA basketball. Right, so yeah, we'll see Michigan Elite Eight, uh, Final Four next year for sure, for sure. Right, exactly. So look, they're look, they're finally, they're finally getting the Supreme Court, you know, involved with this. I know, I know, Emmert's bitch ass was begging and pleading with some with some of the uh, coaches and players here over this past week, but I mean. You know, we we we've done we've done topics on, in past episodes, even pre pre the live stream and whatnot. But apparently, this was an actual hearing, NCAA versus Alston case. The first time the nation's highest court has waited on the business of college sports in nearly four decades. Do you anticipate, JB, any legit movement from the Supreme Court to really crack down on this bullshit that the NCAA has been trying to pull? Man, the NCAA is the biggest gang in America, right? bigger than the KKK. To be honest with you, right? So, um, the NCAA is wicked, right? Because they understand that you can't say we okay. So we give these kids scholarships so they can't get paid, and if they get paid, it takes away their amateurism, so it makes them semi-professional. Right, because they're not professional athletes because this is not how they earn revenue in their living, right? So it makes them semi-professional. Well, at the same time, they sell millions of dollars in revenue, right, for these kids. They make millions of dollars in revenue from these kids, right? And we've said this in previous episodes, right? The only way that this is going to be right is if it's fair. That's the only way it's going to be right. How do we make it fair, right? I believe that these kids should be getting paid. But the only problem is, and we talk about this all the time, Benny, how do you make it fair? Because Trevor Lawrence, whose jersey gets sold in the student shop, right? Fields, whose whose jersey gets sold in the student shop, right? These young women who played basketball that have made it to the Elite Eight or the Sweet 16 or Final Four, whose jerseys are getting sold in the student shop, are bringing in revenue for the college or university. A lot of paper. A lot of bread. So mm-hmm. you're going to pay them the same amount of money as you pay little Johnny Football who walked on and earned a scholarship right. who nobody knows his name? That's the problem, right? Should they get paid? Yes. Right, yes. These athletes should get some sort of stipend semester to semester to make sure that they cool, Right. Because I remember being a, you know, my father, my mom died when I was 11 years old. My father, it was me and my brother, other children, 
right? My dad had other kids. My brothers, my sisters, you know what I'm saying? So he's trying to do the best he could. I'm in school. My brother's in school. There were nights that I didn't have, right? And I called my dad and asked for money. And he couldn't give me money. So, you know, we, we, that's how we develop a family as far as the team goes. Because if I ain't got my brother got, if I, my brother ain't got, I got. You know what I'm saying? That broke my heart, what, about three years ago? When that kid from UConn was like, I'm about to go back home and I might not eat. You know what I'm saying? Remember that whole situation? I can't remember mm -hmm. the kid's name, you know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. I remember his words vividly. He was like, we're about to go back over here and I might not, shit, I might not even eat tonight. You know what I'm saying? Depending on what time I get back and if I can go to the cab and so on and so forth, right? So outside of what you get from your scholarship, there's not much, right? So yeah, these kids should get paid. Yeah, yeah, they should get paid. But it's about mm -hmm. fairness, right? We got to be right. able to make it fair, right? So whatever the Supreme Court right now is doing, that, that really this whole little Supreme Court thing, that's amateurism in the NCAA business model, so on and so forth, right? That's, that's the biggest thing. Let's make it fair. But these kids should definitely be getting some sort of stipend semester to semester. Right, exactly. No, I, I completely agree. Speak, speaking of some bullshit, oh man, listen, we 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 we've had we've had we've had our gripes about some dirty calls in the day, but JB, we just uh, we gotta we gotta we gotta let this run. Oh man! All right, you know what? watch the play here, reviewers. This is the last play of the Elite Eight: Baylor versus UConn. She takes it to the left elbow. She gets hit in the face and the arm, and they don't call the shit again. This was some That's bullshit. Hard. That's hard, baby. That's hard, bro. But man, here's man. here's the thing about that though, Benny, right? I watched that game, and you know, it don't get no better than that. That's UConn girls versus Baylor girls. It don't get no better than that, right? So this young lady drove left, put the shot up, right? She had a she had a hand on her elbow and a forearm on her forehead, right? That's two fouls. It didn't her mush one, her. That's two, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So a foul should be called. Now, wish she had made the foul shot? I don't know. I mean, this is, you know, is what it is. We can, you know, maybe, maybe not. But the foul should have been called. That was some dirty pool. Yeah. Shame on you, NCAA referees. Oh, my God. Speaking of dirty pool and speaking of uh, North Hollywood, JB, I don't know what it is about, yeah. but for folks who don't understand the oh. NoHo Arts District, any anytime a rapper gets a check, they always move to the NoHo Lofts and uh, <laughs> your folks, Quavo Ooh. and Sweetie, were apparently trying to do a half-assed version of some Ray Rice shit. You see them swinging, and now they go, "Oh, she's got the Call of Duty bag. He's pulling her like this. All this type of shit." They got, they got the, they got the crusty ass camera. Look at them, Quavo. First of all, come on, bro. This camera's everywhere. There's always somebody watching your ass. JBR, are you are you familiar with the situation? And what what are you, what are your thoughts on this fucking foolishness? Jesus. I, I, you know, you know how I am about that, bro. Like, so for you women out there, here's the thing, man. I tell my daughters all the time, right? And I don't know what their situation is. And I don't condone women getting hit by men, right? So if you're a man and you're abusive to a woman, right, then shame on you. But at the same time with the dope rhyme, I tell my daughters this. You can ask Anaya Bland Bridges, right? I've told her from the moment she was young, from the first incident I had where a little boy hit her, but she hit him first. I asked her, I said, did you hit him? Yes, sir. Okay. What do I always tell you? She kind of said it the right, like I said it, but I say it like this. If you put your hands on a man, then you run the risk of getting hit like a man, right? I don't know what their problem is. Right. I don't know what their gripe is. I know they're supposed to be broken up because I just, you know, Twitter tails off. Right. But I'm not with that, man. There's been plenty of times my six foot six, 300 something pound self has walked away from my ex-wife because of the fact that she put her hands on me and I didn't fucking put my hands on her. Right. This is what it is. Now, I've thrown my ex-wife across the garage one time before, but then she deserved it. Right. But I walked away after that. It wasn't no continuance, and I'm trying to jump on her and do no, right? right. I had to trying get her to actually, actually like fight yeah. her, right? I had you're, to get you're her, getting off, her off of you. Yeah, yeah, I had to get her off me, and I got the fuck. All right, so nah, man, I ain't with that, man. Like you know, what I'm saying like yeah, it's so many other ways. Just get the hell on, man. Just get the hell on, man. For real, just get the hell on, man. 
Right, because you see, it's like he kind he kind of realizes, like, yo, like, you know, it's like, and bro, it's kind of bogus. Like, even you know, number one, you shouldn't be doing that, but like, number two, it's like you're just you're just gonna. I mean, what do you? I mean, listen, it, it's public domain because it, it was it was on it's on a it's on a uh, elevator video. And look, uh, JB knows the LA game as much as I do. There there are security dudes who will take footage like this and they'll run TMZ because they yeah, know they, TMZ they, will cut them a check for this. They get right, paid. Yeah, right. Mean? So. Ultimately, you know, it's probably for the best if you're getting abusive that you you break it off because there really there's no there's no place at that point when you're when you're getting yeah. when you're getting yeah, physical, you're, let alone a, yeah. emotional abuse and whatnot. So right, nah. that I can that I can see this shit ain't cool, man. Right, <laughs> right. That's that's a by the way. Have you have you seen that? Have you seen that uh that documentary? By the way, fantastic. The Tina Turner documentary, very no, good. I haven't seen it, I, but I saw her 81 years old. Like, hey, Tina yeah. looked good. Yeah, go ahead, yep. Tina. Speaking of, speaking of looking good, we're gonna we're gonna end this before we get out on up out here on a high note. So look, the final fours are set, right? So we got the we got the men's and the women's cracking. So we got Houston and Baylor. We're gonna put this on social media. So follow us at JB and Benny Blue to see our picks. You know we do savage picks. So we got Houston and Baylor, and then UCLA, the Cinderella team this year against the Zags. So in the men's, who who are you feeling? Who do you who do you got going to the championship game? Well. Uh, of course, you know what I'm saying, the Houston's from the South, you know what I'm saying, Texas from the South, and then Baylor from the South. So uh, I'm going for Houston because it's been quite a while since they've been to the Final Four, right? I think I saw a statistic that said it was like the early 90s, some shit like that, right? So I'm going to roll with the H on that. They, you know, they they shocking the world. I think them young boys hungry. Baylor going to be hard to beat. Of course, they're in the, they're in the Final Four for a reason. And then as far as Gonzaga versus that UCLA, man, I, I want UCLA to win it, man. Be honest with you. And this is just because UCLA ain't won shit in so long, and I just want them to have something. <laughs> like, for right. real. Like, my partner, you know what I'm saying, one of our guests, you know what I'm saying, Deshaun Foster, my dog Smoke, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. coach for the UCLA Coach Bruins, Smoke, that you know is. Saying? Coach Smoke, baby. Uh, and I know plenty of cats, my dog Matty Ware, you know what I'm saying, my little brother. You know what I'm saying? These boys is brewing. So I, yeah, I want them brewers to get to the, you know what I'm saying, to the championship and, and it be a dog fight. You know what I'm saying? So I really don't start watching until it gets to like the Elite Eight. Right. So for show, the for final four, I'm I'm all in. Okay. So yeah. I got so listen, I haven't I haven't been watching. I'm familiar with obviously with UCLA because I just beat my Wolverines and, and that kid, that kid, uh Johnny Juzang or whatever his name, that kid, that kid's a problem. He he's he's raising his draft stock through mm. this tournament. So he was showing out uh last night. And listen, Baylor, because of bad karma, what happened to the women? Uh, I'm saying Houston does get to the game, and then I got the Zags going to the, the championship dance as well. On the women's side, you got number one Stanford. You got number one South South Kakalaka, South That's North Carolina. Exactly. And then the U, the UConn, the UConn uh, fucking uh, – the, the UConn fucking bad bad juju beaters, the UConn bad karma beaters apparently going against number three Arizona. So on the, on the women's side, what are you thinking? Well, I think UConn got some bad karma coming to them, so they won't win, right? Um, and then you said South Carolina? Yep. Oh, I'm rolling with, you know what I'm saying? I'm rolling with South Carolina on that, man. Columbus, South Carolina. Let's get it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, the game, Cox. Word. Word. I got yeah. I'm I'm gonna take I'm gonna take South Carolina and Arizona to to go to the championship game. So look, there you go. We've been covering a lot. You know what time it is now, uh, reviewers. Look, if you got if you got some questions, drop those in. Uh, any last questions? Make sure to drop those in for the Savage Hotline. We do have one. But how lest I forget, JB, one from the actual Savage Hotline that, uh, due to uh, quality production issues, I'm going to play through the phone, through the microphone to you, sir. And this comes from our guy, Money Making Mitch. Money uh, see Making if you, Mitch. You, you, see if you can hear this. Hey, this is Sports Mitch. What are your thoughts on the Nelson Aguilar contract currently going on after they got rid of three great linemen? What are your thoughts to begin getting rid of three linemen just to sign a probably mediocre to slightly above mediocre wide receiver? Let me know. Nelson Aguilar. What do you feel? What were you feeling about that signing? So who? The uh, he went to the uh, the Patriots, did he not? I'm pretty oh. sure. Huh. Yeah. Well, this, this so this it, it's like this, right? We never know what organizations are thinking or what they got going on. We never know, right? So when things happen like this, when we get a signing that like makes us scratch our head, right? 
we don't really understand or we don't really know, right? So only thing I can say is this. They signed two good receivers, right? Two good young receivers. Maybe what they're looking for is veteran leadership, right? Maybe they're looking for that person they can put in the slot because Nelson Aguilar has been basically a wide receiver his entire life. And when I say wide, meaning the X and the Z, that means he's on the outside of the frame of the offense his entire life. So maybe they're going to put him inside. He's a bigger body. He can catch the football, right? Possession receiver. That's what receiver, wide receivers do. They become possession receivers. First downs are important, right? Let's just be real. <laughs> like, first downs are important, and with the offense that they run, those linemen don't seem so significant, and that hurts my heart to say that, right, because I'm a lineman, right? They don't become as significant because of the offense they run. Uh, there's no secret that the offense that, you know, San Daniels runs at, at New England, they get the ball out of, out of hands quick, Right. They're going to make sure that somebody's always in the quarterback's face to get the ball to him. There's always a back leaking out the backfield, quick dump off type stuff. You know what I'm saying? They nick pit you to death. That's their offense, right? Some ugly ass games. And then all of a sudden, next thing you know, they hit a tight end for 60 yards over the middle for a touchdown, right? That's just their offense. So, yeah, I mean, we don't understand it. But at the same time, obviously, they know something we don't. Now, hell, I ain't in their front office, so I don't know what they got going on. But shout out to Nelson Aguilar. Get that bread, boy. Listen, I'm just I'm just glad that I'm just glad that fucking old man Belichick is finally cutting some checks and and actually giving Cam a, a fair shake on this new one year. Right, right. Bringing right. in John U. Smith, you know, bring right. and then bringing in you know Matthew Judon, bringing in yeah. some fucking pieces that can make yeah, them respectable, yeah. right? You know, because Lord knows Lord knows he can't draft, so he, at least you got to pay some folks to come in and play for your ass. <laughs> God damn it. So been look, doing pretty well, Sid. I ain't gonna lie, you know what I'm saying? He, he, he can't draft, but that man got a whole lot of rings. So right. So look, Sa- right. Savage Hotline. Get any last questions? We're about to go here. Get any last questions you want to get in, uh, Liz? I'm getting I'm getting the vaccine on Friday. I'm supposed to get it on Sunday, but I was I was I was like out of it. I had a bad headache. I mean, not COVID. I didn't have COVID. Let's be clear. <laughs> I know. I know, JB. I know it's. I know you're not allowed to be sick. You're not allowed to actually be yeah, sick with something else. You, you can't, can't be. You're not allowed. But yeah, the flu ain't the flu. Only, does the flu even exist anymore? Right. Right. As soon as you get sick, you got COVID. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, damn. You right. Exactly. Saying? So I was gonna get Sunday. I'm gonna get the first one. You know, first one on Friday, and there you go. Shot to Pfizer. All that stuff. Uh, any last questions? Get them in. Otherwise, uh, JB is gonna take us home with his patented edition. Of we need us, Doctor Bridges. What is on your mind before we get on up on this live stream and let folks run this back in podcast form? God damn it! First of all, I just want to say again, thank you to Miss Corbin Hunter. Shout uh, to Corbin. The elegance, you know, saying the intelligence, the the drive, the hustle, the grind. Again, my heart is full right now, Benny, because that little girl is special to me. All right. So, um, well, so that's to that young woman. I used to call her a little girl all the time. She's a young woman at this point. She's special to me. Uh, other than that, man, just. I said the last few episodes, man, just continue to love and teach love, right? I work in a gym. People that don't know I manage the gym, right? And people always freak out when they see little white babies run up to me, right? <laughs> they always freak out. Like, you know what I'm saying? As for people that don't know me, I am a large human being. I'm 6'6", six, six, and I weigh at this point about 292 pounds. And you slim muscular, down and you're still large. Right, Shit. muscular. I'm a big dude, right? But to see these little babies, Mexican. Black, white, you know what I'm saying? I have a little little uh, little little baby named Layla, right, who gives me baby fever, right? She makes me want to have another one. All right, everybody know I got a gang of kids already, but You got a roster, sir. Don't even sugarcoat it. You got, got a roster. I got a front five and a six man, right? So continue to preach love, right? Continue to teach love, preach love, be kind to thy neighbor, right? It's, you know, it, it, it's just just the way it's supposed to be, right? There's nothing wrong with that. Hey, and shout out to my dog, Kevin Robinson. Kevin hates hip hop. Kev, Kevin, congratulations, doggy. Any social yeah. media, right? This man got married. And I, first of all, we're going to have to fight, Kev, you know what I'm saying, and drink a couple beers afterwards. But, uh-huh. you know, he tell you, bro, you got married? Come on. Family. Right. Hey, he didn't tell. He didn't tell. He just dropped it. But I knew. Right. I knew it was in the works. It was in the works. And he was I mean, do it I, mean I mean, I didn't know. It was gonna, I mean, I knew it was going to happen eventually because you know him and Mama. They they tight like that. You know what I'm saying? They talk mm-hmm. about building an empire. That's right. that's what they're doing. So 
Ah, man. But anyway, other than that, man, uh, keep rocking with us. We appreciate y'all out there. Uh, check us out on all streaming platforms for this podcast. Episode 146? 176. Damn, 140. <laughs> Jesus Christ. 176. I'm just trying to 176, get it right, baby. So that's right. Episode 176. Holler at us on social media at JB and Benny Blue for all social media. All right. There's Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. All right. Get at us, Savage Hotline. Benny, what's the number? 818-850-2804. You heard Mitch did it. That means you can call yeah, in and leave us a yeah, message yeah, and we yeah, will yeah, play yeah, on the show. And of course, we got our merch. You know what I'm saying? When you go on any one of our social media platforms, man, check out our merchandise, man. Hit us up. Get it. Made to order. You know what I'm saying? It's good stuff. Good quality material. Holla at us. Hey, and tell your friends about us. This is the JB and Benny Blue Review. My man, Benefit Ryan Smith the third. My my brother from another mother. Love you, bro. Uh, appreciate Love you, sir. You got a birthday coming up. I got a birthday coming up, right? I'm about to be 41 years old in these streets. All right. And please believe we're going to turn the fuck up because I didn't get to turn up for my 40th because of COVID, right? Oh so please God. believe we're going to tear whatever city we at up. I can't go to Miami. My whole boy's up and I can't come down there. You know what I'm saying? It's not cracking. I know. We're due for Miami and Vegas. What the fuck? So that, that's what I was about to say, Benny. Vegas is in the work, right? Nice smooth trip All to right. Vegas. Get some little gambling in. I just want to shoot some crap, baby. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Anyway, review it. Love y'all. Thank you, sis. Appreciate the girl. Love y'all. Hey, holler at us. Fuck with us. Love y'all. Social media. Get at us. Mm-hmm. Text. Call us. Whatever. We hit back. We follow back. We do all that. Much mm-hmm. love and no drugs, man. Ta. Reviewers, we appreciate you. Follow us at JB and Benny Blue. We're on all streaming platforms. Apple Podcast, Spotify. This will be in podcast form for you to indulge in case you didn't tap in with us live. And you'll get the video uh, as well. And yeah, uh, uh, Liz, Liz, can, Liz can attest. Those drinking nights hit different at 41. Be careful. <laughs> hey, look, though, Liz. Tell me what I say. This, this is the ingredient. This is the ingredient. Whole right? lot of... Water. Right. Stick to the water, folks. Appreciate it, sir. Great show, Courtney. Say great show. What up, girl? That's right. Thank you, Courtney. I will see you in one. I will see you in a second. And the we appreciate one. everybody. You said what? <laughs> the next one. Ah, yeah, you know. Good. Yeah, you know. <laughs> we'll work, we we might we're working on something. We, we, we got you. We work on, and, and I won't. I won't just. Uh, I won't just. I won't just. I won't just spring that one on you. You'll. You'll. You'll know what time it is. Like you, reviewers, you know what time it is. Every Wednesday, 6.30 Pacific, 9.30 Eastern, the live stream. Everybody logged in. Everybody saw us. They didn't say nothing. Man, tap in, man. How about your boys, bro? Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. We want to make this a thing thing. You know what I'm saying? Real for it. So next Wednesday, we'll see you 6.30 Pacific, 9.30 Eastern, JB and Bane Blue Review.com. Until next time, we are out, bitches. Peace. Yeah. Bam.